Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how to make this really fun Olympic torch using just paper, maybe a bit of um, glue or scissors, uh, tape, maybe a stapler and inside I've got my flashing headlight and you can add a torch in there if you'd like to do the same. So there you go guys, I'll show you how to make this. So the first thing you will need to do is to draw a semicircle on some nice kind of thick paper or card. I have painted this paper a bronze colour to make the handle of my Olympic torch. You can choose to do it whatever colour you like. But to draw my semicircle, I'm going to take a big bowl, place it on the paper, draw around it and then cut the circle in half. And that way you can make two torches or you can make one depending on how you feel. But once you've got your semicircle, you then need to cut it out using some nice sharp scissors. Remember, you use the whole blade of the scissor here. So try to use minimal amount of pressure and try and use the whole blade and run the scissors down to make a nice straight and smooth line, okay? Cut out your semicircle and then I'll show you what you do next. Once you've got your semicircle, you're then going to roll the semicircle onto itself to create a cone shape. So I'm going to turn it the other way and I'm going to start to roll my cone, starting with a nice small point from the center point of the circle and rolling outwards. Just like this. Okay? Now that you've got your cone shape, you can either run a little bit of tape along this line here to secure it, or you could use Pritt stick, or you could use a stapler. If you're gonna use masking tape though, just to make it look a little bit neater, try and run the masking tape on the inside and secure it with a staple on the outside, just so that it looks nice and neat, okay? So let's put our um, cone to the side. We'll come back to that in a minute. So that's the handle of our Olympic torch. Now we're gonna create the Olympic flame. So I'm taking two pieces of paper. I've got orange and I've got yellow, but you could choose white paper and just color it in if you'd like. I'm gonna draw some flame shapes, which I'm gonna cut out. So I'm gonna start at the very bottom and I'm just gonna draw some wiggly lines like this. They don't have to be very straight. In fact, the more shape you give them, the better this will look when you stick it onto your torch. So I've drawn some wiggly lines. They just look like this and then I'm gonna cut them out. I'm gonna do that twice on this orange one too, so that I create two different types of flame that is gonna to stick to my cone, to my handle, okay? Cut them out with a nice sharp pair of scissors, and then we're gonna add a little bit of detail. Now that I've cut out my flames, you can see them here, I'm gonna create a little bit of detail on them using dry brushing. So I've got a dry, bristly brush here, you see how rough and bristly it is? I'm not gonna add any water to this brush. I'm gonna take some paint, and here I've got some orange and some red paint, and a piece of kitchen towel or toilet paper or something that's quite nice and rough. So I'm gonna start with the orange one. I'm gonna take a little bit of this red paint onto my brush. Now the paint is quite wet, um, and I only want a small amount, so I've dabbed a little bit off. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to create some brush strokes that lead from the top of the flame down towards the center, okay? So I'm gonna push the flame down and I'm gonna to start to dry brush my flame using my paintbrush, okay? Just like that. So you can see I started to create some texture. I'm gonna do this all the way along my flame to create some real um, depth so that the flame doesn't look so flat, okay? You can do this um, with pen or pencil as well. You can use chalk. That would make a really nice texture. But anything that just doesn't make it look flat. You wanna try and get away from this flat orange piece of paper and we're gonna try and make as much texture as possible, okay? So using this dry brushing technique, remember you're gonna take a little bit of paint off so that you're not completely covering. You want some of the orange paper to show through because flames flicker and that's the kind of um, movement, I would say, that we wanna get throughout our flames. So here is one just with red paint on top. Now because this is on orange, I'm obviously not going to add orange paint to this one. But on this one, on the yellow one, I'm going to spin this around, I am going to do orange and red. So I'm going to start with the red because it's the most uh, prominent colour. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to brush from the top down towards the centre 
using the bristliness of this paintbrush, okay? But you can already start to see it's creating some nice texture. And I'm going to do that all over this flame. Um, you may find that you might need more than two flames to make your torch. I've cut out a few extra ones, um, which are slightly different heights. Um, and I'm going to use those to create a real strong flame. Um, so once you've done your red, you can then add some orange onto your paintbrush and do a similar technique where you're brushing from the top to the bottom. We're trying to leave a little bit of negative space. That's what uh, the plain paper is, negative space. Um, so that we have a nice gradient, but with some texture. So now I'm gonna add some orange. So I've got some orange on my brush. Again, I'm gonna take a little bit off because I don't want too much paint. On this yellow one, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of orange in here. I might need to rub a bit more of this red off. It's quite bright. Don't worry if you make mistakes. This is meant to be fun. This is meant to be textured. So really, your mistakes aren't really gonna show, okay? And as you can see there, I left too much red on my paintbrush, so I had to take some more off. So again, you can put the orange more towards that negative space. You might choose not to add the orange. You might think, well, I just like the red as it is. So there are my flames, okay? Like I said, you might choose to do a few more. I've done some smaller ones, so you can see the difference here. I've cut some smaller ones, which I am gonna decorate just in case I need a little bit more flame, okay? So I'm gonna do these two, and then we're gonna assemble our torch. So here are two of my flame shapes. I've got one big orange one and one small yellow one, and I'm gonna stick this one on top of the bigger one, just so that I get a little bit more um, variance in my shapes. So I'm going to put a bit of glue at the bottom here, quite a large bit of Pritt stick, or you can use a little bit of sellotape, or you can use a stapler if you'd like. And I'm going to offset it a little bit so the flames are irregular like this. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a press down, get rid of any extra glue. So in a moment, we're going to attach this into the inside of our cone that we made earlier. What we're going to do is we're going to create a circle like this and we're going to place it onto the inside rim of our cone, okay? Now in order to do this, obviously you're going to need to know how big your cone is. You can do this just by gently rolling it up in your hands, creating a circle slightly smaller than your cone and then pushing it inside and the paper will unfold just like that and it will give you more or less the right size which you can stick your paper flames into, okay? So I'm gonna do that with a little bit of glue now, and then I'll show you the finished product. So the best way I've found to attach your flames is to actually use your stapler and just give a little staple right where your flames begin on the inside of the cup, just like that. So you can see there, stapled it in. And then I'm going to roll my flames so that they roll and sit inside one another and they create more flame shapes like this. You can push it down a little bit deeper into your cup. And to secure it, again, you can add a little staple here on that last remaining flame edge, just to keep it in contact with the cup and it won't come apart. Or you can use a little bit of tape if you don't have a stapler or a little bit of glue. Oh, I've got to really squeeze tight here. There you go. Once you've got your flames inside your torch, just have a little play and move your flames around a little bit so that you can get a really nice effect. Just like that, there's your Olympic torch. Beautiful. So there's my one finished. Very simple and easy to make. A nice thing to do if you're playing Olympic games at home. Another finishing touch is you can sit a torch into the middle of your um, Olympic torch like this. And so you can create light coming from the centre. And if you dim down your lights at home, that will give you a really lovely effect. I'm going to try and find my torch so that I can show you what I mean. Okay, guys. So inside my torch, I've actually put my flashing headlight. Uh, I use a headlight here in Australia because it gets really dark and at night you sometimes can't see. So I put it on my red flashing mode and you can probably see here 
it makes the flame look like it's moving or flickering. So that gives it a really nice effect. And that's something you can do at home. The other thing you can do at home to make your flames a little bit more realistic is you can kind of squish them and play with them like this to give them a little bit of a, a wiggly shape. And I've done that. I've pulled over the ends of my flames here. So there's my Olympic torch tutorial. You can make your own one at home, quite quick and simple. Add your torch if you want to give it a little bit of an extra flame. You can see my headlamp in there flashing away. I hope you have a really good day. I'll see you next time. Have fun. Bye.